What's up everyone? Zach Hample here at City Field and I'm on home run duty tonight. Nice weather, there should be batting practice, gonna catch some balls hopefully before the game. And then you know the drill, I'll be in the outfield during the game. Jordan Lawler, top prospect on the Diamondbacks, still has not hit a home run, so hopefully he's playing. And that's it, let's get inside. All right, so the Mets had finished taking batting practice by the time I got in, and the D-backs had not yet started hitting, but look at this. Jace Peterson chucks a ball high over the net, and look who catches it. So it's always nice to get on the board early. And you can see the man right here, Mr. Peterson, taking some fungos at third base. And this player with his back facing us is Luis Frias. You can see him up close here. Folks, this is what six foot three, 245 pounds of power looks like. This is the rookie Andrew Salfrank from Fort Wayne, Indiana, a sixth round draft pick by the D-backs in 2019. And in just a second here, I gotta give a shout out to this dude, Dave McKay, 73 years old in the Canadian Baseball Hall of Fame. He's been around forever and he's pretty cool. This is Cattell Marte now taking some fungos. And, well, as for me, I was standing around just waiting for something to happen. Merrill Kelly right here tossing a ball to a kid down in front. And the D-backs were just about to start hitting, so I made my way over to left field. And as soon as I got there, Joe Mantiply was throwing a ball to a girl down in front, went over her head, so I picked it up in the seats, handed it to her, and that was my second ball of the day. And batting practice turned out to be a whole lot of fun. Action-packed first group of BP for Arizona. Got those two toss-ups in the seats and then two home runs on the fly. And man, that second one felt so good. It's always fun to judge the ball perfectly, climb back over some seats while it's in midair. So five total. And looks like Tommy Pham is in the cage now in group two. So I'm gonna shut up, try to catch some more. BP for the D-backs is done and it was good and bad. Good because I got a couple more baseballs so that is seven now today but it was bad because if you follow me down this way and you see these metal armrests, well look at my leg right here. I absolutely whacked it. So uh, yeah I was gonna say that's gonna leave a mark but 
it's already leaving a mark. Uh, and I didn't even get that ball, so that was pretty stupid. Right now, I think we only have lefties up. So I think I'm gonna head over to right center. Come on. walking into a section. I don't know if you could hear what I was saying, but I was yelling, let's go deep. And he did, I'm in row, well, about a dozen rows back. But it feels deep, because this section is stupid. So normally I would hate being in a section covered by a net because there's no way to get a baseball except look at this out here in right field at City Field. I still don't want to sit there but that's kind of fun. And anyway, all the baseballs were getting picked up here because, yeah, it was the end of batting practice. So I had eight baseballs at this point while the Mets groundskeepers were doing their thing. There was a ball in the gap behind the wall in right center field, right near where this batting cage was getting rolled in. So once the grounds crew had that in place and Omar Narvaez made his way out to right center, a few of us were trying to get that ball and I got it. And I handed it to this kid. It was actually the second ball that I'd given him that day. And after that, I enjoyed watching the pitchers and catchers get ready for the game. Shortly before this game got underway, I decided to head down to the seats along the left field foul line because, well, first of all, I thought it would be cool to get up close to Jordan Lawler, and it was definitely nice to see him doing his thing and getting loose. And. I figured it might be a good spot to get one more baseball and reach double digits. And I got lucky because there's a very friendly guy on the D-backs, the strength and conditioning coordinator named Nate. I actually had him in one of my videos in Arizona earlier this year. So he came over to say hello to me and hooked it up. So that baseball was number 10. And I hustled out of the section and made my way over to left field after that because the game was about to start. Lawler batting second for Arizona. And unfortunately, in his first at bat, he grounded out to the shortstop, so that was a bummer. But he should be up a few more times. Bottom of the first, Pete Alonso hit an RBI single. So the Mets have an early 1-0 lead right now in the second inning. There's a lantern fly on your back. noticed Zach Gallen out on the field before the game, the D-back starter in there tonight, and he has had a great 
season in contention for the Cy Young Award. 15-7 and seven is his record, and he came into tonight with an ERA right around three. But the Mets have gotten to him early, top five right now. They're on top two, nothing. And Joey Lucchese for the Mets, the lefty with the funky motion. He's throwing zeros up there, so. You know, I got all this room, all these empty seats, you know, these September weeknight games. I wish they'd hit one. in this game, bottom of the seventh right now, and they are on top seven to nothing. And that home run that was hit earlier was by Mark Vientos. That landed on the party deck in left center field, so I had less than no chance of catching that one. Zach Gallon, of course, long gone by now. So just a couple innings remaining, and we'll see how this thing wraps up. Casey was absolutely dealing tonight through the first seven innings, and the Mets played a flawless game, well, until this happened. A fielding error by Francisco Lindor on a routine double play ball, and unfortunately, that was the end of the night for the Mets' southpaw. And guess what? The sloppiness continued after the Mets brought in a new pitcher. There was another potential double play ball, but Jeff McNeil made a horrible throw over to first base that allowed a run to score. And other than that, I was excited when Mr. Pete Alonzo got one final at bat in the bottom of the eighth, but he went down swinging and the D-backs got a couple of guys on in the ninth, but did not score any more runs. The final out coming on a Sebi Zavala fly ball to Rafael Ortega in center field. And so this was a great game for the Mets and especially for Lucchese who went seven plus innings and allowed just one earned run. Although he did have two pitch clock violations, but all things considered, I'm sure he'll take it. And as for home runs, well, Vientos hit the only one of the night. So that was kind of annoying for me, but it was a great day overall. Double digits, baby! I'm never gonna complain about that. Yeah, 10 balls all before the game. Gave almost all of them away. I think I just still have one. So they all count for the lifetime total. That number is now 12,355. Um, by the way, final score, the Mets won at 7-1, to one. and yeah, pretty chill, 
night. So very glad I was here, but of course, would have been cool to catch a dinger. I think security wants me to leave. So bye everybody. This way. This way. That way, to the right. Woo!